Today's lesson is going to be using traditional algebraic techniques to solve traditional physics problems. Uh, these will be in, entirely on constant velocity motion. And in this process that you'll see, I will be modeling the details of what I would like for you to show whenever you are solving problems. This includes problem solving on tests, but also problem solving on web assigns that will be worked out in your uh, web assigned notebook that you should always keep up to date. So let's first look at some of the information that I would like to see with each problem. Then we'll actually try to uh, see the, how, how that's used in, in solving real physics problems. Okay, first of all, whenever you start a problem, from the problem itself, you are to pull out all, all the information that's there and label it. So I've got as my number one list all variables given in the problem, label with the appropriate uh, symbols and units. By that, I mean, for instance, doing something like if you see five, then a velocity is five meters per second, then you would do something such as say V equals five meters per second. So you would actually identify the variable, the traditional symbol, uh, or the accepted symbol for that variable and the numerical value with units. In some cases, you would want to provide a sketch of the situation to assist in problem solving. This is uh, of particular, particular use when we get to forces and we have to diagram uh, scenarios where forces are acting on some object. But in general, uh, and there are a number of cases where a sketch would be provided for you, or in other cases, a sketch may have to be drawn by you. Then from our list of equations, which we don't have very many at this point, uh, we would select an appropriate equation. And that inco could involve some derivation of a new equation. And you'll see that in this problem solving set where we take the equation for constant velocity and we modify that into uh, a much larger, more complex equation for more complex motion. Uh, when you have your equation and only after you have your equation, substitute your variables into the equation and solve for the unknown. And you need to show at least some rudimentary algebra. In other words, don't show an equation and then an answer. Show your work, how you manipulated the, uh, the variables to get the proper uh, answer in the end. And then finally, once you have that answer, identify your final answer by boxing it or circling it um, and clearly, unequivocally identifying it as the answer. Um, on an AP exam, for instance, you don't want someone searching for an answer because they may give up the search. Uh, there are a large number of questions that have to be graded, usually one question, um, maybe 20,000 times or more that this person may have to grade, and they're not going to search for your answer because you didn't identify it. So get in the habit of, of doing that if you're not already. So let's start with um, a rather simple constant velocity motion problem. We've got uh, two students, Heather and Matthew, take 34 minutes to walk eastward along a straight road to a store that's two kilometers away. What is their average velocity in meters per second? So the, the things that we would identify, first of all, they take 34 minutes to walk eastward. Eastward's important because that's a direction along a straight road uh, to a store that's two kilometers away and we want to know their average velocity. And so let's identify these, uh, these values. First of all, 34 minutes. If it takes 34 minutes to walk somewhere, then that implies that there was a zero time and an end time. So this is not a clock reading. This is actually a time interval. Delta T equals 34 minutes. And they're walking eastward. Generally speaking, when we look at um, a Cartesian plane, and we've got uh, north, south, east, and west, our convention is that east will be positive, west will be negative, north will be positive, south will be negative. So they're going to walk eastward along a straight road to a store two kilometers away. That is a displacement. 
and we're going to, I'm going to emphasize positive 2.0 kilometers. Then we want to know their average velocity. Average velocity is identified by the symbol V bar. And that's what we're looking for. And we want to know this in meters per second. So the first thing I notice when I look at this problem is that we're looking for a velocity in meters per second, but we have um, a displacement in kilometers and we have a time in minutes. So before I substitute, I'm going to go ahead and do conversions on these, uh, on these particular quantities. And we'll start with minutes. We have 34 minutes showing the conversion to seconds. We have 60 seconds is equivalent to one minute. And that's going to give 2,040 seconds. You should, by the way, be substituting these values into a calculator to make sure that my math is correct and that you can see where the numbers are coming from. Notice that minutes cancel in that problem using dimensional analysis. We then have two kilometers we need to convert that to meters. We can say that every one kilometer is 1,000 or 10 to the third meters. Okay, so that's two times 1,000 is going to be, with kilometers canceling, 2,000 meters. So now we need an equation. From our modeling activities, we have found that velocity is the slope of a position versus time graph, and that average velocity is defined as delta x over delta t. We can then substitute these values in that we have and say that v bar is equal to a displacement of 2,000 meters divided by a time of 2040 seconds. Okay. And doing the division, we're going to end up with a 0 0.98. And we've got meters over seconds. We want to check significant figures. And I'm not checking significant figures until I get to the very end. I don't want to over round, so I'm going to round once at the end. I've got two significant figures in time. I have two in the displacement. So I'm going to leave two in the answer, which is what I have here, 0.98 meters per second, and that is the final answer. And moving on to the next problem. A gentleman, you... Uh, Actually, we have a city, Eugene, is 75 kilometers due west of Salem. If Joe rides from Salem to Eugene on his bike in six hours, what is his average velocity? Okay. So we have Eugene is due west of Salem. So here's Eugene. Here's Salem. So Eugene is going to be in a negative direction. Salem is in a positive direction. Joe rides from Salem to Eugene on his bike in, in six hours, and that total displacement is 75 kilometers. So we have a delta x equal to 75 kilometers, but we're moving from Salem to Eugene, so that's going to be a negative 75 kilometers. It takes six hours to do this, so this is a time interval. Six hours. And then what we're interested in is his, uh, his average velocity. So V bar equals delta X over delta T. We're not asked for any particular units here, so I'm going to leave it as kilometers per hour, which is appropriate for that level of displacement and also this time rather than meters per second. So we're going to go with delta x is negative 75 kilometers divided by 6.00 hours. So that's 75 divided by 6. That's going, and this is a negative 75 divided by 6. So that's negative 12.5 
kilometers per hour. Or you could also say in this 12.5 kilometers per hour west. I prefer the negative. Now, one of the things, sig figs, this has two sig figs, and this has three. So we're dividing two sig figs by three. We should have only two in the answer, which would be a negative 13 kilometers per hour. And that would be our final answer. A little difference in this problem was the fact that you had to recognize that traveling west was negative and carry that negative through the problem to get the final answer. Next problem. We've got a bus stop that is 0.68 kilometers down the street from the museum. It takes you nine and a half minutes to walk north from the bus stop to the museum entrance. What is your average velocity? So again, we're solving for an, for an average velocity. Okay, the bus stop is 6.68 kilometers down the street from the museum. And it takes you 9.5 minutes to walk north. So we have a displacement, we have a time, and we have a direction. So we've got, first of all, delta x is going to be, we're walking north. North we have defined as positive. So we have positive 0.6 eight kilometers. We have a time interval to walk from the bus stop to the museum of 9.5 minutes. So our average velocity then is going to be delta x over delta t and that's going to be 0 0.68 kilometers divided by 9.5 minutes. Again, this problem did not ask us for a particular unit in the final answer. There's nothing particularly wrong about kilometers per minute, so I'm going to leave it there. Uh, so this 0.68 divided by 9.5, that comes out to uh, 0. 0.716 kilometers per minute. Looking at sig figs, both of these values have two, so we would convert this over to 0 0.072 kilometers per minute. Final answer. Next problem. A bus traveling south, excuse this, this is an autocorrect issue on this problem, and I'm not sure how it even possibly thought to correct south to that. So we have a bus traveling south along a straight line path for 3.2 hours. It has an average velocity of 88 kilometers per hour during the 3.2 hours. It stopped for two hours excuse me, for 20 minutes, uh, and then traveled south for 2.8 hours with an average velocity of 75 kilometers per hour. So we're going to divide this motion up into three stages. Stage one, stage two, and stage three. In stage one, we have a delta T, 3.2 hours. We have an average velocity equal to um, equal to three point uh, there it is 88 kilometers per hour a lot in this problem we have in stage two a delta t of 20 minutes and we have a velocity average velocity during that time of zero kilometers per hour and then in stage three, we have, let's see, 2.8 hours, or delta T, 
2.8 hours, and we have an average velocity equal to 75 kilometers per hour. It is important to note that they are moving south, so we would have a negative 75 here, and I'm going to correct this one over here to a negative, seven, negative 88 because it's also moving south. So here's our problem. When we look at, well, first of all, we're looking for average velocity for the total trip. So I'm going to call that V total. And in deriving this equation, or looking at this equation, we can say that V total equals delta x total divided by delta t for total trip. Our problem is, is that we don't have any displacements. We have velocities and we have time. So in a scenario like that where we're missing or appear to be missing a variable that's required to solve, we're going to have to do a little substitution. But let's, let's expand this equation just a little bit. Since we have three stages to the, to, the, to the motion, we can substitute for delta x total. We can call that delta x1 plus delta x2 plus delta x3. So we can find, if, if we have the displacements for each of these straight three stages, we would add those to get, together to get the total displacement. Total time would be delta t1 plus delta t2 plus delta t3. Now we know in general that velocity is equal to displacement over time interval. We also, by rearranging, like this over one, we've got a proportion here, we can say that cross multiplying, V bar times delta T equals delta X. So that would be true for each of these three stages. So I'm going to substitute in V delta T for delta X in each of these instances. So we can now say average velocity, which really should be V bar total, is equal to V bar 1 delta T1, because that is delta X1, plus V bar 2 delta X2, plus V bar 3 delta X3, all over delta T1 plus delta T2 plus delta T3. Now, we need to go ahead and, uh, at, at this point, we've got all the information. We've got velocities and times and times, so we can solve for the average velocity. So, substituting for number one, we've got, let's check our units also, we've got hours and kilometers per hour here, hours and kilometers per hour here, we do have minutes at this location, so we'll have to fix that before we use the, the 20 minutes, although it's, um, for the numerator of this fraction, it's going to be multiplied by zero, so it won't matter. It will matter in the denominator. So we have V1, negative 88 kilometers per hour, multiplied by 3.2 hours. plus 20 minutes, which is one-third of an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that conversion here. We've got zero kilometers per hour times 0.33 hours plus negative 75 kilometers per hour times 2.8 hours. And this in parentheses also. And that's all going to be divided by uh, delta T1, which was 3.2 hours, plus 0.33 hours plus 
2.8 hours. So solving this, we're going to find these products and sum them and divide it by this sum on the bottom. Um, actually, the numerator in all of this comes out to negative 1.6 kilometers and the denominator sums to 6.33 hours. That reduces to 70, negative 77.7 kilometers per hour. Okay, And then if we go back and look at sig figs, it appears that everything has two sig figs. So I think we would be safe in saying negative 78 kilometers per hour as the final answer. And if you look at your answer, 78 kilometers per hour, we're somewhere in between 88, 88 kilometers per hour and 75 kilometers per hour. Um, so this, this answer makes sense. And it's also in the negative direction. Now, so this is what I mean by deriving an equation. We had to come up with an equation because it appeared that we were missing some information. Um, this is also just in itself up here. This equation is really a new equation for you. Uh, where we're saying that the sum of the displacements divided by the sum of the time intervals equals the average velocity for an entire trip. Um, this problem, the derivation of this equation, may, uh, you may want to look at that more than once. Okay. Well, I think we missed actually a problem on that. We didn't. We've actually already solved it. But um, problem B here was what is the displacement for the total trip? The displacement for the total trip to x is actually the numerator from the fraction up here. That is equal to negative 491.6 kilometers. So I did not identify it, but that is actually, we've already solved for it. Okay, now we can move on. Okay, in this problem, we've got an athlete who swims from the north end to the south end of a 50-meter pool in 20 seconds and makes a return trip to the starting position in 22 seconds. Okay, so in our next problem, we have an athlete swimming from the north end to the south end of a 50-meter pool in 20 seconds, making a return trip to the starting position in 22 seconds. We want to know the average velocity for each half of the trip and the average velocity for the round trip. So if we look at stage one, label it one page one of the trip we have a let's see a delta x equal to 50 meters and we have a time interval delta t equal to 20 seconds in stage two of the trip we have a delta x equal to 50 meters also and we have a delta t equal to 22 seconds. One of these, however, is going to have to be negative. And we start out moving from the north end to the south end. So that means that this value should be a negative 50 meters. Find the average velocity for the first half of the trip. We'll call that V bar 1 is equal to delta x 1 over delta t 1. And delta x 1 is negative 50 meters divided by delta t 1, which was 20 seconds. That gives a value of negative 50 over 20. It is negative 2.5 meters per second. Everything here is to three sig figs. The velocity for the second half of the trip, V bar 2, is equal to delta x 2 over delta t 2. 
equals positive 50 meters. And then that's divided by 22 seconds. That's a 2.27 meters per second. To get the V bar total, we're going to have delta X1 plus delta X2 divided by delta T1 plus delta T2. That's going to equal negative 50 meters plus 50 meters divided by delta T Oops, I can go ahead and substitute that value in. Divided by 20 seconds plus 22 seconds. That's going to be 0 meters divided by 44 seconds, which is going to be 0 meters per second for the total trip. This may seem odd, but you'll notice that the starting point and the ending point are the same, so the displacement, total displacement is zero, leading to zero meters per second. Our next problem, we have a little bit of graphical analysis. And we have a position versus time graph for a squirrel running on a clothesline. We want to know the squirrel's displacement, so what is delta x? here in a time interval of zero seconds to three seconds. Let's write this instead in the way that it should be written, which is delta T is equal to TF minus TI, which is equal to the final time minus the initial time, so delta T would equal three seconds. So our three second location is here. We're starting at zero. We want to know the squirrel's displacement during that time. So the displacement delta X is going to be XF minus XI. We have not identified XF and XI. Uh, so let's do that now. Delta X is equal to the final position, which is here. And that is going to be at negative 2 meters minus the initial position, which was here at 0 seconds. That would be 0 meters. So we end up with a negative 2 meters. And I think on this graph, probably one significant figure would be appropriate. Squirrel's average velocity during that time interval, V bar is equal to delta X over delta T. And that's going to equal negative 2 meters divided by 3.0 seconds, which is going to be a negative 0 0.67 meters per second. We could also easily find that on this particular uh, problem because we have an, an actual graph here. We could actually draw a line that connects our two endpoints and we should be able to find that the slope of this line equals a negative 0 0.67 meters over seconds. In the last problem, we have two runners who are going to be on either side of a flagpole. We're going to call this the flagpole. And we label that. Here's our flagpole. 
and runner A is initially six kilometers west of the flagpole. So we're going to say that this is runner A and the initial position of runner A is at negative six. Clean that up a little bit. Is at negative 6.0 kilometers. We've got runner B. Put runner B here. Xi is originally at 5 kilometers to the east. We have um, runner A is running at nine kilometers per hour to the east, so that's a positive. And we have the initial velocity of runner B at eight kilometers per hour. That's to the west. We want to know how far the runners are from the flagpole when their paths cross. We want to know where they are relative to the flagpole to the west or to the east. We can write an equation for this and this is the same equation that you would have for your buggies in lab that would say XF equals B delta T plus XI. We can make these more specific to the motion that we see here by saying that xf of a equals b bar a delta t of a plus x i a and xf b equals b bar b delta t b plus x i b our issue is this, that we know where they start, so we know xi, and we know their velocity, but we don't know uh, times or final positions for each. We're actually trying to find the final position for each. But something that we can say here is that since they're crossing paths, they're going to have two things in common. We're going to have xf of a is going to equal xf of b. And we're also going to be able to say that delta t of a equals delta t of b. So I'm going to solve this as a system of linear equations by setting each equation equal to the other equation uh, because this equation equals xfa, this equation equals xfb, and xfa and xfb are equivalent to one another. So I can say that va delta ta equal uh, plus, excuse me, I missed my y-intercept, plus xia equals p bar b delta tb plus xib. Now we can also say that since delta ta equals delta tb, and we really don't have to differentiate between TA and TB because the delta T's are the same. We can just call it delta T. So now we can plug in some numbers. We've got VA is positive 9 meters per second times delta T plus the initial position of negative 6 kilometers. And I've Plug the wrong unit in there. If I have it, this is kilometers per hour. And that equals VB, which is negative 8 kilometers per hour times delta T plus the initial position was 5 kilometers. now combine like terms. I'm going to move my 8 kilometers per hour to the left. That gives me 17 kilometers per hour 
delta T equals adding six kilometers to either side equals 11 kilometers. I can then solve for delta T by dividing out the 17 kilometers per hour. And we end up with delta T equals 11 divided by 17, which is 0 0.2. Six T equals zero point six four seven, and that would be seconds. I'm keeping an extra digit there. Okay. Once I know time, then I can go back to either equation. I'm going to take this one and solve for xf. So I can say xf a then equals the original velocity of a which was 9 kilometers per hour multiplied by 0 0.647 seconds uh, and this is hours not seconds plus a negative six or a minus six kilometers. Hours cancels and we get a final answer. X F A then equals point negative zero point one seven seven kilometers. Now, if we look back at the original values, two sig figs everywhere, so I'm going to take this to two sig figs also and say that it's approximately negative 0 0.18 kilometers. Now that negative 0.18 kilometers means that we are 0 0.18 kilometers west a flagpole when they actually uh, cross cross paths. We didn't have to use this equation. We could very easily have used this one and we should end up with the same answer if we solved correctly. That's the end of the uh, video lesson. You will now be able to solve problems hopefully using some of these techniques. You'll get some practice using WebAssign uh, in the coming day.